Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop and today I'm going to give you some tips on on point math. In the description below you can download this free PDF from Fat Quarter Shop. We laminated it so that it would easily be stored in your sewing room. So what this is has corner and side setting instructions, the traditional method and the Kimberly method. Basically, the Kimberly method is adding half an inch to it so you can trim down later to get a more accurate result. This right here is considered a corner triangle and these are considered side triangles. Your corner triangles are always going to be cut from squares on the diagonal once and your setting squares are always going to be cut on the diagonal twice. That's just a simple rule, and all of that information is on this free PDF. So I would encourage you to download this PDF, and next I'm gonna show you how you assemble um, all of your stuff. So when you're calculating what size to cut your squares, you're gonna be working with your finished size. So if your unfinished block is 12 and a half, your finished size would be 12 inch, and that's the quilt that I have here today. So you would go down to 12 inches, and you can either do the traditional method, which is the first two columns, or my method. So it says for me to cut 18 and 3 quarters for my side and 9 and 7 eighths for my corner. So I've cut those, I've labeled them with my alphabetes so that I can always uh, remember if I'm working with corner or setting or side. So the first thing is on your corner, you're just going to cut on the diagonal once. So this one's super easy, just corner to corner. This is biased, so it's gonna be very stretchy, so you just wanna be really delicate with it. So I will put those back together, because you'll notice that once you cut all these up for your whole quilt, you might forget what is corner and what is side. So I've got a C for corner. Now on my side, this, rectangle, I mean, sorry, this square is too big for my rectangular ruler. So my trick is I use a friction pen and I'm going to draw a line from corner to corner the whole way so that I make sure that it doesn't, um, it doesn't go diagonal before I cut it and mess it up. You know, you can only really cut these things once. So that looks about right. And since I'm cutting half an inch bigger with my method, if it's not perfect, you're not gonna know in the end. So then I'll come back, cut to the center, cut to the corner. And again, now you're working with bias edges. And since I have cut that in the center, I can just go halfway, halfway now because I can follow my line. I don't have to worry about that full diagonal since I've already cut one. So that is how I cut those. And again, I'm gonna label these as side. And my next step is going to be showing you how to attach these triangles with some tips. So one of the rules in on point assembly is to always add your side triangles first and you assemble everything into rows. Then, after all of your rows are together, then add your corner. Your corner triangle goes on at the very, very end. So I'm just gonna kinda show you one row. So here is just a block, just to kinda show you. And we need two setting triangles. Also, one thing that is very helpful is when you're working on on point, is to lay out you know, your whole quilt on the floor just so you don't accidentally put the triangle the wrong direction. So I've got it this way. I'm gonna pin it. You have to pin because you're working with bias. Um, and when you're pinning, you want to make sure that this lines up and this lines up. And I'm gonna pin. I'm gonna pin a different way just cause we're gonna pretend I'm sewing. This is not how I usually pin. So I'm gonna pin that one, then I'm gonna pin the next one. Again, lining up both edges. That way you just know that that triangle is on there correctly. It's not as easy as a square. 
So from here, you have your side triangles attached. When you go to your sewing machine, you want your triangles on top. So you'll start from this end and go down, but on the other side, you will start from this end and go down so that all of your seams are underneath. Um, they will sew together better that way. And since we're doing that method, usually, if you did the traditional method, which is also on our PDF, you would um, have exactly a quarter inch on this tip, which then you're having to make sure this fits and this. Now what you'll do is just take your ruler, you're gonna press, and then you're gonna cut these tips off. Then you're gonna find the very center of your block. I mean, I'm not being exact, this is just a, um, you would actually find the center. And you'll find the center of your corner triangle, match your two centers, pin, and you're gonna pin in place and then you're gonna stitch a quarter inch away and then you're gonna press. And you will see that once you assemble this, you have about half an inch extra on the edge. Normally, you would have exactly a quarter of an inch. So if you went from a quarter of an inch to a quarter of an inch, this might be wavy. And if this is wavy, then the edge of your quilt is gonna look funny. So that's why I make it bigger. Then what I would do is take a friction pin, mark a quarter inch away on all sides. And especially when you get to this corner, you wanna make sure your quarter inch and your quarter inch are the same. So if you mark all the way around, you can make sure that this is an exact 45 degree um, edge right here and you trim it down and then that way your quilt comes out perfectly square it's basically squaring your quilt down it's the way that i've been doing it for maybe i don't know maybe five or six years um if you do it the traditional way you just want to make sure that when you get your triangles on the edge that they're exactly a quarter inch away or when you press you're going to be short on your edge so make sure to download our free guide and if you're curious about this block, this is the Rolling Stones block. And in the description, we have the free pattern. So see you next time. Thanks for watching.